Timing is everything. We waited as long as possible on Dream Chaser because we really, really wanted to fly it. It's a very exciting mission, Tori Bruno said at a press conference on June 26, 2024. But now time has run out for Dream Chaser. The rocket that was supposed to carry it into space will launch without it. The Dream Chaser's delay will definitely leave it behind. And worse, in the near future, there won't be a rocket ready to launch it. It looks like Sierra Space might have no choice but to turn to SpaceX for Dream Chaser's inaugural flight. So what's the situation? How can SpaceX step in to help? And what does the future hold for Dream Chaser. The first flight of Dream Chaser was originally slated to use ULA's Vulcan rocket. This mission was also supposed to be Vulcan's second flight, crucial for achieving Cert 2 and completing the certification process for national security payloads. The problem is, while Vulcan is ready to go, Dream Chaser isn't. Tori Bruno, CEO of United Launch Alliance, ULA, revealed the situation in a notable statement. We have been informed by Sierra Space that they feel that they have significant risk towards making the mid-year flight date. They told us they will step aside in order to support our critical national security space missions that will come afterwards. This case puts ULA in a tight spot. To obtain the necessary certification and gather crucial data, Vulcan must carry a payload on its second flight. But with the intended payload off the table, ULA had to make a bold decision. Go ahead with the flight using a dummy payload, and they need nobody to pay for this launch. So, while ULA can address its own challenges, how about Sierra Space? It seems like they may have been overly optimistic about the development timeline for Dream Chaser. This overconfidence has led to a scenario where the spacecraft's schedule no longer aligns with the rocket it was supposed to launch on. So, until Dream Chaser is finally ready, what rocket will launch it? This question isn't as straightforward as it seems. In the current environment, ULA is likely likely to focus its resources on fulfilling the U.S. Space Force's National Security Space Launch NSSL, contract missions. These contracts, worth billions of dollars, are strategically vital for ULA. At present, Vulcan has over 20 missions lined up under the NSSL contract, notably two specific missions, USSF-106 and USSF-87, must be completed this year. These critical, non-negotiable missions add further pressure to ULA's already packed schedule. Moreover, the window for Phase 2 of the NSSL contract is closing, while ULA has just been selected for Phase 3. This means the company must balance completing its current obligations while gearing up for new missions in the near future. This condition is significantly reducing Dream Chaser's chances of launching on Vulcan in the near future. Beyond that, Ariane 6, the European Space Agency's rocket, is still not ready for commercial missions. Delta IV Heavy has officially retired. Atlas V, another reliable rocket from ULA, only has 16 missions left before it, too is retired. Notably, all of these missions are already specifically planned. The majority are allocated to launching Amazon's Kuiper satellite, while the rest are primarily tied to Boeing's Starliner spacecraft, a key component of NASA's commercial spaceflight program. All these factors combined put Sierra Space in a difficult position. They not only have to finish Dream Chaser, but also need to find an alternative launch vehicle. So, in this predicament, what can Sierra Space do? There's still one company we haven't mentioned, SpaceX. SpaceX's Falcon 9 is the most reliable rocket on the planet. Sierra Space could simply book a flight and rest easy, knowing there'd be no schedule conflicts or surprises, except for the weather, of course. However, the issue isn't as simple as it seems. Dream Chaser isn't a lightweight spacecraft. It already has significant mass on its own. And when you add the Shooting Star module, along with the expected payload and full fuel load for the mission, the total weight might push Falcon 9's payload limits, potentially exceeding 20 tons, pretty heavy. Even if we assume that Dream Chaser's total mass falls within Falcon 9's payload capacity, there's still a significant technical challenge to overcome. This issue revolves around the size and structure of the Dream Chaser spacecraft. In its cargo configuration, the spacecraft needs to be enclosed in a protective fairing to shield it during the launch through the atmosphere. To fit within the fairing, Dream Chaser's wings will be folded. However, even with its wings folded, Dream Chaser requires a fairing with an internal diameter of at least 5 meters. Here's the catch. Many people mistakenly believe that the Falcon 9's fairing has an internal diameter of 5.2 meters, which would be wide enough to accommodate Dream Chaser. In reality, the 5.2 meters refer to the external diameter of the fairing. The actual internal diameter of the standard Falcon 9 fairing is slightly less than 5 meters. This means the standard Falcon 9 fairing is not wide enough to safely house Dream Chaser. The obvious solution might seem to be using Falcon Heavy, a more powerful version of Falcon 9, with a larger fairing. However, Falcon Heavy is primarily designed and used for missions requiring large payloads or high energy, such as launching heavy military satellites or sending payloads directly into geostationary transfer orbit. Using Falcon Heavy to send Dream Chaser to low Earth orbit, LEO, might be considered overkill. Moreover, the fairing width on Falcon Heavy is essentially the same as Falcon 9S. Designing and developing a new fairing is a complex and expensive process. 
It's not as simple as just widening the current fairing. The shape needs to be carefully crafted to match the rocket's aerodynamic, while also being compatible with the overall height and width of the launch vehicle. Moreover, developing a new fairing just for a handful of missions, like Dream Chaser, doesn't make financial sense. SpaceX has optimized its current fairing design to suit the vast majority of missions, and they don't necessarily need to accommodate every potential payload, especially when SpaceX is heavily investing its resources into developing and launching the Starship system, their next-generation rocket and spacecraft combo. Starship is designed to eventually replace both Falcon 9 and Falcon Heavy, boasting much greater payload capacity and eliminating the need for a traditional fairing. In this context, pouring resources into a new fairing design for Falcon 9 or Falcon Heavy doesn't align with SpaceX's long-term strategy. If Sierra Space decides to go with a SpaceX launch vehicle, Starship is the most viable option. Starship can handle both configurations of Dream Chaser and boasts impressive thrust and payload capacity. However, in this scenario, Sierra might need to wait a bit longer. However, this waiting period doesn't have to be a setback. Sierra Space can use this time to conduct all the necessary testing and inspections, ensuring that when the opportunity to launch finally comes, Dream Chaser will be ready for a flawless debut. Looking ahead at Sierra Space and Dream Chaser's future, we need to consider the broader landscape of the space industry. According to the current plan, the International Space Station, ISS, is set to retire by 2030. However, in reality, its operational life could be extended slightly depending on technical conditions and political decisions. The upcoming flight of Dream Chaser is a cargo mission, but Sierra Space still needs more time to develop and perfect the crewed version of this spacecraft. This means Dream Chaser may not have many opportunities to make trips to the ISS before the station's mission comes to an end. While this might seem like a significant limitation, it's far from the end of Dream Chaser's ambition. In Blue Origin's renderings of the Orbital Reef project, we see both Boeing's Starliner and Dream Chaser docked at its ports. This suggests that Dream Chaser could have a bright future in the new era of private space station. It's conceivable that in the future, Dream Chaser might be launched aboard Blue Origin's new Glen Rock and operate alongside these commercial stations. This opens up a new range of opportunities for Dream Chaser, ensuring it will have a crucial role in the future of space exploration. Dream Chaser isn't just another spacecraft. It embodies the legacy of NASA's once glorious space shuttle program. While previous shuttles were large and complex, Dream Chaser is designed to be significantly more compact and efficient. Measuring only about 9 meters in length, Dream Chaser is just a quarter the size of the Space Shuttle orbiters. However, thanks to its smart design and the Shooting Star cargo module, the Tenacity spacecraft, the name of the first Dream Chaser, can carry up to 5.5 tons of pressurized and unpressurized cargo to the space station before returning to Earth. Although Dream Chaser's cargo capacity is smaller compared to traditional space shuttles, it makes up for this with its incredible flexibility and high customizability for a variety of missions. Tenacity is a versatile vehicle with a much faster turnaround time compared to previous systems. Its design includes multiple features aimed at enhancing reusability, driving down costs, and increasing frequency of use. One of Dream Chaser's standout advantages is its ability to land on conventional runways, much like a commercial airplane. This significantly expands the number of locations that can accommodate the spacecraft upon its return to Earth, increasing mission planning flexibility and improving responses to emergency situations. Situations. This capability also greatly reduces the cost and time required for recovery and preparation for the next mission. We already have a number of cargo and crew spacecraft, like SpaceX's Dragon and Northrop Grumman's Cygnus. However, Dream Chaser is designed with a standout strength. Remember in 1996 when veteran astronaut Story Musgrave stood on the shuttle's deck during landing? This is something that simply can't be done with capsule-style spacecraft. Dream Chaser, with its shuttle-like design, also has this capability. Winged spacecraft have a superior re entry profile, which is especially important when transporting sensitive scientific equipment, valuable samples, or even biological experiments back to Earth from the ISS. Another key advantage of Dream Chaser is its exceptional maneuverability. Unlike typical capsule-style spacecraft, which can only land at a specific location once a day, Dream Chaser can do so every 90 minutes, offering multiple landing windows. This capability is crucial in emergency circumstances when weather conditions are unfavorable or when timing flexibility is needed. It also allows for the possibility of landing at various locations on Earth, enhancing mission flexibility. But the big question remains, can Dream Chaser turn its tremendous potential into reality and make a groundbreaking impact in the space industry? Time will tell. All right, that's it for today. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel for more in-depth looks at the latest advancements in space technology. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.